BestBookBits.com presents Mindless Eating, Why We Eat More Than We Think by Brian Wansink, published in 2006. The book will literally change the way you think about your next meal. Food psychologist Brian Wansink revolutionizes our awareness of how much, what, and why we're eating, often without realizing it. His findings will astound you. Can the size of your plate really influence your appetite? Why do you eat more when you dine with friends? What hidden persuaders are used by restaurants and supermarkets to get us to overeat? How does music or color of the room influence how much and how fast we eat? How can we mindlessly lose instead of gain up to 20 pounds in the coming year? Starting today, you can make more mindful, enjoyable, and healthier choices at the dinner table, in the supermarket, at the office, wherever you satisfy your appetite. The written summary can be found on our website, bestbookbits.com. So without further ado, I bring the book summary of Mindless Eating. The best diet is one you don't know you're on. Chapter 1, The Mindless Margin. Portion sizes, environmental cues, marketing, high taste expectations, and many other factors influence people to mindlessly consume significantly more food than people realize. Moreover, people will deny such influences affects them. Deprivation diets don't work long term because the body's metabolic rate lowers and the weight loss is very likely to be regained. Our bodies and brains fight against mindful deprivation. There is a calorie range, a mindless margin, where we are unaware of whether we are eating more or less. Most of us wouldn't know if we ate 200 or 300 calories more or less than the day before. Consuming 10 fewer calories per day amounts to one pound of weight loss over a year. Mindlessly trimming 100 to 200 calories per day amounts to 10 or 20 pounds lost per year. Re-engineering strategy number one. Think 20% more or less. Dish out 20% less than you think you might want before you start to eat. Most people won't miss it. For fruits and vegetables, think 20% more. Chapter two, the forgotten food. Our stomachs don't count calories and our memories aren't good at tracking how much we've eaten. We often realize we've gained weight when our clothes don't fit well. More than our stomachs, we rely on our eyes to estimate the volume of food we eat as a measure of having eaten enough. We tend to feel full only 20 minutes after we've eaten enough. We tend to dish out the volume we perceive as enough and eat until the plate is clean. Volume trumps calories, so adding air, water gives a person a sense of having eaten more. People tend to better estimate calories for smaller amounts of food. Re-engineering strategy number two. See all you eat. See it before you eat it. People who pre-plate their food eat 40% less than those taking small portions and getting seconds and thirds. See it while you eat it. Keep empty glasses, wing bones, etc. visible. Remember what you've eaten. Chapter 3. Surveying the tablescape. Larger packaging suggests larger serving sizes. People tend to pour more drink into and drink more from a short fat glass than a tall thin glass. People tend to eat more less depending on the greater less size of plates, bowls, serving spoons, serving bowls, and serving sizes. Greater, lesser variety of food types and colors encourage greater, lesser consumption. Re-engineering strategy number three, be your own tablescaper. Many size your boxes and bowls. Use smaller plates. The smaller the packages, serving plates, bowls, and plates, the less we tend to eat. Don't make too much food unless the intentional leftovers are off limits for seconds. And chapter four, the hidden persuaders all around us. The more we see food, the more we tend to eat it. Keeping candy dishes at a distance and or out of sight reduces the candy consumption. Reading, thinking about food primes our appetite and causes us to eat more. Simply changing our path to avoid the kitchen or keeping food out of sight helps us avoid mindless eating. Convenience, inconvenience also impacts how much we eat. Re-engineering strategy number four. Make overeating a hassle, not a habit. Make overeating a hassle, not a habit. Leave serving dishes at a distance, e.g. in the kitchen or on a sideboard. Deconvenience, tempting food, putting them away. Out of sight, hard to reach, and package well. Snack only at the table and on a clean plate. Chapter 5, Mindless Eating Scripts. 
When we eat, we often follow eating scripts, habitual eating patterns of mindless eating. For example, I fill my plate, clean my plate, and take additional helpings and tell others I'm eating with a finishing. Eating with one to seven plus people causes us to eat 35 to 96% more. Pace setter, eating companions that eat faster, more influence us to match the pace. Men often eat competitively, associating large healthy appetite with power and masculinity. Women don't have this association with men and perceive women eating less as feminine. The distraction of the television, a newspaper, or other focus of attention causes us to lose track of how much we're eating, causing us to overeat. Fine dining restaurant atmospheres cause us to linger and eat more than we'd normally would. Fast food restaurants atmospheres cause us to gulp and go, so we often overeat before we start feeling full. Sense of tasty food when appetite and influence us to eat more. Even packaging infused with reinforcing confusing scent causes us to eat more or less. Temperature also has an effect. We are less hungry on a hot day and more hungry on a chilly or rainy one. Re-engineering strategy number five. Create distraction-free eating scripts. Rescript your diet danger zones, e.g. dinners, snacks, parties, restaurants, desks or dashboards, etc. See Appendix B. For example, try being the last to start eating. Pace with a slower eater. Serve more healthy foods. Chew gum instead of snacking, etc. Eat in the dining room or kitchen rather than in front of the television, which distracts us from our consumption. For snacks, dish out a ration only rather than eating from the package. Chapter 6, The Name Game. We often taste what we think will taste. 19 out of 32 people, given what they were told was a strawberry yogurt to eat in a dark rated chocolate yogurt as having a good strawberry taste. About 900 soldiers given red colored lemon jello were convinced that it was cherry jello. Expectations of good and bad taste will affect our subjective taste experience accordingly. Foods with positive descriptive menu names are rated as more appealing and tastier than identical foods with plain labels. And diners have more favorable attitudes towards the dining establishment. Positive adjectives often draw from our four main themes. Geographic, nostalgic, sensory, and brand. Brand names are particularly influential, often leading us to pay a significant premium to prime our expectations and remind ourselves and others of our socioeconomic status. Brand pricing also helps picker our taste expectations. Re-engineering strategy number six. Create expectations that make you a better cook. When asked, what's for dinner? Use two positive descriptive words to enhance your menu items. Spend the last 15 minutes of your of prep on atmospheric details, e.g. soft lights, soft music, soft colors, nice plates, nice tablecloth, nice glasses. Chapter seven, in the mood for comfort food. There are three common comfort food myths. Number one, most comfort foods are indulgently unhealthy. Number two, people tend to eat comfort foods when they're sad, stressed, or bored. And number three, comfort food preferences become fixed when we are children. 40% of favorite comfort foods are fairly healthy. Men gravitate towards meal-like comfort foods because of the association with care. Women, not comforted by associations with kitchen work, prefer convenient snack foods. People are more than twice as likely to seek comfort foods when happy than when sad. People are more likely to seek out comfort foods when they're happy, 86%, or want to celebrate or reward themselves, 74%, than when they're depressed, 39%, bored, 52%, or lonely, 39%. Comfort food associations can be formed at any time of life. Personality identification has significant influence over food choices. People reinforce self-perceptions by choosing foods they identify with their personalities. People can form comfort food associations as an adult when foods are repeatedly paired with positive events. Similarly, foods paired with negative events, e.g. foreign food eaten during active foreign combat, can become discomforting. 
Eating favorite foods first or last often reflect birth order and family size. Firstborn children often save the best for last, while younger children are often eat favorites first. Childhood eating habits can follow us for years. Re-engineering strategy number seven, make comfort food more comforting. Don't deprive yourself. Keep the comfort foods, but eat them in smaller amounts. Rewire your comfort foods. Start pairing healthier foods with positive events to create comfort associations with healthier foods. Chapter 8, Nutritional Gatekeepers. The nutritional gatekeeper controls 72% of what a family eats. The nutritional gatekeeper typically does 90% of the grocery shopping and thus largely determines the menu. People considered good cooks tend to fall into five groups. Giving, e.g. comfort foods for gathering, healthy, optimistic, book-loving, nature enthusiast, innovative, creative, trend-setting, experimental, methodical, talented, recipe-reliant, weekend enthusiast, competitive, perfectionistic, dominant, iron chefs. Of those, only the 22% giving cooks did not appear to help their families eat healthier. When a child is exposed to a greater variety of foods at a young age, they tend to be more receptive to healthy food choices. Pregnant mothers who drank carrot juice in their first trimester significantly increased their children's preference for carrot-flavored cereal months later. In eating context, facial expressions of infant caregivers also affected the food preferences of children. Attitudes about food and eating are also transmitted from parent to child and peer to peer. By age five, children would see pretty much whatever they're given as an appropriate serving size. Re-engineering strategy number eight, crown yourself as the official gatekeeper. By convincing in marketing healthy foods, offer variety to mix it up and break junk food habits. Teach the half plate rule, half fruits and vegetables, half protein and starch. Make serving sizes official by giving children snacks in sealed bags, containers, plastic wrap while keeping the remaining snacks out of sight. Chapter 9, Fast Food Fever. Fast food is designed to fulfill our hardwired love of the taste of fat, salt, and sugar, and a desire for good value and maximum convenience. People lobby hard to have more nutritional information readily available in the fast food restaurants, but the fact is that the average customer does not care. Those who do seek out healthier foods, e.g. Subway, tend to satisfy the health halo effect, adding unhealthy extras, e.g. mayo, and rewarding themselves with unhealthy dessert, e.g. cookie. Although Subway customers consume fewer calories than the average McDonald's customer, they overeat their caloric intake estimates by a greater amount. The 10-20 rule for estimating drink calories states that thin drinks, e.g. sodas, juice, milk, are about 10 calories per ounce, while thick drinks, e.g. shakes, smoothies, are about 20 calories per ounce. We often associate low-fat labels with low calories, yet this is often not the case. We tend to consume more foods considered healthy, and thus the health halo influences overeating. Fast food companies don't want us to be unhealthy. They just want to sell food and be profitable. There are a couple of ways such companies can create win-win scenarios. Number one, create extra small packages, e.g. healthy portion sizes at low cost, or extra value large meals that could be shared. Number two, create packages with pause points, e.g. visual cues and or packaging that influences a possible decision to stop eating before consuming all. And number three, change the recipe but keep it good. Advertising it as new rather than healthy, i.e. stealth health. Also focus on volume by adding air, water. And number four, provide simple health labels but don't expect that it will much improve eating habits. And number five, keep it affordable. Although consumption goes down as prices go up, this is not generally true for dessert type foods. Our challenge is to make healthier foods more attractive and affordable. Re-engineering strategy number nine, portion size me. Beware of the health halo. The better the food, the worse the extras. People eat larger portions of food perceived as healthy and tend to reward themselves with unhealthy extras. Think small or super share. You'll likely enjoy smaller portions as much. 
spit value meal combos, and order an extra drink. Chapter 10, Mindlessly Eating Better. The extremes of changing food capitalism and bite-by-bite diligence do not offer much hope for change. The key to change lies in the middle ground of better eating. Mindlessly eating less, eating without guilt, eating more nutritiously, and or eating with greater enjoyment. Two techniques for better eating changes are food trade-offs and food policies. Food trade-offs state, I can eat X if I do Y. For example, I can eat dessert if I've worked out. Food policies are personal rules that guard us from just this one's decisions. For example, I will serve myself 20% less than I normally would. I will have no second helpings of starches or will never eat at my desk. Choose three personalized positive changes from the re-engineering strategies that will each reduce your intake by 100 calories. Keep a checklist with three changes that you mark at the end of the day to record your successes with the three change goals. Experts in behavioral modification say it takes about 28 days to break an old habit and replace it with a new one. After a month of success with a positive mindless habits, one can choose more changes for the following month. It's easy, positive, and slow. If we make three small, 100 calorie changes, by the end of the year, will be as much as 30 pounds lighter than if we didn't make them. Appendix A. A compares popular diets and examines pros and cons. Appendix B. Diffusing your diet danger zones. Number one, the meal stuffer. The meal stuffer eats to excess at meal times, cleaning plates, taking second helpings, and often feeling uncomfortably full. Pre-plate high-calorie foods in the kitchen and don't get seconds. Use smaller plates and tall glasses. Slow down eating. Reduce variety. Don't clean the plate. Eat fruit for dessert. Adopt the half-plate rule. Number two, the snack gazer. Gazers reach for convenient food throughout the day. More out of habit than hunger. Keep snack foods back in the back of the cupboard, refrigerator, or freezer. Do not pre-buy snacks for a future occasion. Substitute healthy foods or chewing gum for snack cravings. Eat only at the table and on a plate. Reduce snack inconvenience. Keep healthy, unhealthy food in or out of sight. Never eat directly from a package. And number three, the party binger. Parties are high distraction environments for bingers who frequently choose lose track of consumption and overeat or drink. Stay physically away from the buffet tables and snack bowls while talking. Put only two items on your plate per trip to the table. Use volume to control eating. Starting with big healthy foods and leaving remaining space for the rest. When distracted, e.g. by good conversation, set the food down and focus on the people. As you arrive, tell yourself you're there for people, business first, and secondarily to eat. Arrive late and leave early. And number four, the restaurant indulger. Indulgers often frequent restaurants and are often on expense accounts, are affluent gourmets or dinks, double income, no kids, in their 30-something years. Choose two of the following, appetizer, drink, or dessert. Ask the waiter to omit the bread basket or remove it early. Ask the waiter to pre-wrap half your entree to take home. Alternate drinking glasses of water with another drinks. Sit next to the slower eater. Be the last to start eating. Share desserts. And number five, the desktop or dashboard diner. Desktop or dashboard diners speed eating while multitasking. Brown bag your meals. Stock proteins, e.g. yogurt and tuna, that take the edge off of snack attacks. Do not multitask while eating. Give it your attention. Use food policies and trade-offs. Chew gum. Replace every other soft drink with water. And that's a wrap on Mindless Eating by Brian Wensink. Subscribe to our channel and take a look at the hundreds of book summaries uploaded previously. To find hundreds of written summaries, check out our website, bestbookbits.com. And for hundreds of audio podcast summaries, find us on mixcloud.com forward slash bestbookbits. Like and share if you got something from this summary and comment on what one thing stood out for you. Thanks for watching and have yourself an amazing day. Take care.